do you remember like the worst haircut that you ever received in your life? Yeah, I, I do. <laughs> it's terrible. Des describe it. When, how long ago, and uh, most importantly, describe to us how amazing your, that cut was. Okay, yeah. This is funny. This is about, probably about five years ago. And the, the girl I was dating at the time lived in Elephant and Castle, yeah? Which is a poor, a poor area of London. And uh, I went to this bar with a black guy, I think it was Ghanaian. And uh, this guy, he, he was on his phone, you know, with the headpiece. For, for the whole time he was doing my hair. And then when he was doing like, my front line, he had the clippers. And, and the clippers started to scratch, it, scratch my forehead. So yeah, it, it scratched across here and all down here. And after I had the trim broke, it was like, it's obviously like had a pin, but like a tattoo, all here. <laughs> And then, and then, the, and then the, the guy, no disinfectant, no nothing. So I'm getting like irritated, irritated because I'm like, bro, am I going to get an infection now as well? Do you know what I mean? It was crazy. And the guy just goes, ten pounds, ten pounds. <laughs> so, so I gave him five pounds and just got out of there. Do you know what I mean? Like it was fucking crazy. And like the, the guy didn't clean the clippers, no nothing. Man, and he was, he was on his phone for the whole time. The whole time, man. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and that was when I knew, you know, I can't get these ten pound trims no more. Oh, my. <laughs> Fuck, man, it was traumatic. Yeah. <laughs> it was traumatic. <laughs>
you know, cleaning, helping out, and every day asking them, you know, questions about the barbering stuff, how can I do this? I bought my, fir my first pair of clippers, and then slowly, slowly start building from there. My name is Michael, also known as P, and I got in barbering because, you know, I've always had a fresh trim. You know, the owner of the barbershop that I work at now, he's been cutting my hair since I was 14 years old. I'm 30 now, so you can kind of get where I'm going with this, right? And long story short, I quit. I was a cleaner. I quit my job, you know, and I came in into the other shop. I started sweeping up, man. You know, started sweeping up, watching, learning, until you know the first haircut I ever done was bolding someone out with the blade. That was the most <laughs> maddest experience I had to do. But you know what? I've managed to do it. And I've done it to that uh, free time Afro barber of the year, uh, Tariq, that works up in, in Cardiff. Very good barber. I think you should check him out. But anyway, yeah, so I come in, start sweeping up, clean up, cutting every day. You know, I never stopped. I haven't been late. But in five years, I haven't been late. I've only been late twice five years and I feel like it's very important you know to get up and you know and make sure that you know it's a blessing and great and it's a blessing and we're grateful that you know we've got people that will come and see us so we can make them look good for their day you know it's very important but long story short I love what I do man and I'm not an Instagram barber not because I don't want to be but because I feel like the people knowing is enough and I just don't know how to work on Instagram but you know what I mean but long story short as well this is probably the best thing that ever happened to me in my life. I came into the game kind of late, at like 25 years old, but better late than never. And you know, and I've seen barbers, I've seen barbers, Mario, that have been cutting here for years. You come into a barber shop like ours, I haven't got a clue what they're doing. And you have to be humble enough to understand that there might be people that have been doing it young, a uh, short amount of time, but you have to be teachable. Always be teachable, you know, because there's other people that can help you along your journey, you know? And it's like, like we said, if you're a barber, like we were talking earlier on, if you're a barber, you have to be able to cut every single type of hair. White, Afro, Asian, you name it. Scissor haircut, you know, like, yeah, all this, all, 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 I feel like it's very important for a barber, yeah. if he's really good at fading, to get to get with it with the scissors on top, because I've seen a lot of barbers out there in the States as well, they like to use a lot of clippers to do the hair. It doesn't, to me, that doesn't make sense. You know, if you can combine the, the hairdressing and the barbering together, fucking hell, you'll be flying. You know what I mean? And, and you're only gonna you're only gonna find out by watching videos, by learning, by looking at these barbers that are out there on Instagram that are really, really good. You know, take that as an inspiration because I do. And it doesn't matter how good I might be or how good people think I might be. I'm all up. Like I said to you earlier on, I've only been doing it for five minutes. And in them five minutes, I've only learned a little bit. You know, so we're still flying. We're still getting there, man. Yeah, man. That's it. Awesome.
We go to a barber shop. I mean, you're expected to cut all types of hair. You expect the barbers to be able to cut all types of hair. Otherwise, you shouldn't really call yourself a barber. What would you call yourself if you can't cut all types of hair? A hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> a hairdresser? A hairdresser, yeah. I love it. Um, if you can't cut all types of hair, you should call yourself uh, an apprentice. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, the nicest, way I, nicest way I could put it. Because otherwise you're just limiting yourself, right? Limit yourself to, to so many customers, so many people. You can only cut one type of hair. You know? No matter if you're black, white, Chinese, Indian, wherever you're from, right? you should be able to cut all types. If you, if you choose this, this is um, where well, life. <laughs> you, gotta, you know, you gotta go for it. Why not? For sure. Why not do it to the to the to your full ability? Okay, let it be known. I'm working hard when I ain't on the phone. This ain't a hunt. This ain't a phone. Grind never stopping. I'm keeping it cold. Unlocking the door with the holy key. You supposed to be this close to me. And hopefully, you understand. the stage. Yo, maybe this cold and I'm talking like no degrees. This ain't a fluke. I seen it way before it ever happened. He gave me the view. I had to put in my time for the TV. It coming in soon. I couldn't leave without love to a variant or an experience. You gotta get up and do what it do. So complicated, homie, it's you. Always gonna wait until you in the mood. I been running, came out gunning. Stop the fight on your words It's what you hear, not what you heard I'ma hang on every verb I'ma show you what it's worth Every day I'm on the earth Till they put me in the dirt I'ma get into it first Said I'ma get into it first Until they put me in the dirt Said I'ma get into it first Said I'ma get into it if you was to walk into a barbershop, what will let you know that it's a bad barbershop without even seeing a cut? What are some of the things that you could notice to be like... The customer's face in the mirror. The what? The customer's face in the mirror. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I mean, I've seen customers like other barbershops where everyone, every customer's face in the mirror. He's not face in the mirror. He's not face in the mirror. I don't think you can give someone a skin fade if the customer's face in the mirror. Huh. It's impossible. I mean, with all the shadow and work around it, like, it doesn't make sense. That's why we use the mirror. I mean, the first thing I would look at is cleanliness, man. That's very important to me, cleanliness. If I walk into a barber shop and everything is just out of place, dirty, you know, disorganized. Even, even the, appearance, the appearance of the barber. If you see a barber, it looks like he just woke up. Yeah, <laughs> and he's got his head sticking up like that, yeah. you know. <laughs> Like he didn't wash his face, still got his pillow marks on, on, on the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Then I'll be like, nah, I guess I'll have sleep, bro. He's gonna fuck up my head. Even if he's the best barber in there, I wouldn't sit with that guy. But that's just me. Some people might look at other things. So I'm, I'm very like, cleanliness, you know, stuff like that. And obviously, clippers gotta be on point. Um, you, know when, you know when you hear that clipper that goes, <laughs> Gunshots. <laughs> 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 yeah, so for me, first thing cleanliness. And then obviously I look at before seeing I mean seeing the fades or whoever's getting a haircut. Um then I'll I'll be able to tell I mean I'll be able to tell if a barber's good just by the way the way they hold their clippers. And I'm not saying I'm the best barber, bro. There's a lot of better barbers than me out there, I know that. But I always try to be the best I can be. And I know I know how to hold clippers, bro. So I know if I see a guy holding clippers like that, or, or like going like that, you know, then I'll be like, nah, that guy's just learning. Bro. So you know, nah, don't see me with that guy. Fluffy, the AKA Venezuelan gentleman, is the glue to not only the culture of champs, but he also has tremendous influence on the consistency and the culture for every barber that's in the shop. 
Let's watch the master barber do his thing. <laughs> and today we're doing a very classical trim, you know. It's a combination of an old school gentleman cut and the new school with a bit of that skin touch, you know. Calm down before you stress up the groove. The energy a little different when the blessings are cool. Hey, who you talking to? Just know I ain't no regular fool. Could be anything in the world, but I can never be you because I had time like I'm on my tiptoes, baby. You think a little too small. I got big goals, baby. Hey, where the money at? Look, I just need the info. Pronto, I go and get it. Split it with my kid folk daily. And I'm the type of that might change my number on you. Yeah, that's how you react when people took a slumber on you. Pretty brown skin, baby. I can see the summer on you. You see all the bread and I know it make you wonder, don't you, don't you, don't you? Ooh, I ain't surprised at all. Seen them rise and fall. Went up the mountain, it wasn't hard to climb at all. At the top, I found some relief. I finally got some peace. Carry on, but please don't mess up the moon. Yeah, I worked too hard for it. No, I need to beat it for you. Mess up the moon. Yeah, ooh, I worked too hard for it. And I need it, so please don't mess up the moon. Don't, 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 don't mess up the moon. Don't, 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 don't mess up the moon. That's a good way to get someone out of your chair quickly, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 